Do you remember when the Titan Bonk build was really good? Yeah, I kind of miss it. Well guys, today we have a new Titan Solar build that is going to be our replacement to the Hammer DPS build we once had, because you probably know by now that the throwing hammers got nerfed. What happened is they now have a cooldown when picking up the hammer, so you can throw a hammer, but when you pick it up it'll take about 1.4 seconds to refresh. No big deal, right? Wrong. It is a big deal, because that one second delay makes you lose roughly 1.5 to 2 hammers when using it continuously on the same enemy, which in turn makes you lose over double your pre-nerf DPS. Now on the other hand, we have one of the best solar subclasses in the game that works for a ton of different builds, and with the seasonal artifact now bringing perks that allow you to infinitely scorch enemies and become radiant, that on a titan sunbreaker is godly because of the aspect Saw Invictus that grants restoration from sunspots, which are created from killing enemies that are scorched. And remember right, everything is being scorched. It's literally infinite restoration. But it's also infinite abilities for our melee and grenade in most cases too. We're going to be getting our abilities back faster, we're going to be constantly buffing ourselves with radiant and restoration, and on top of that, we're actually going to turn this once godly melee build into a new godly grenade build using Ashen Wake. It's insane. But it's not as insane as getting cheaper games over at Instant Gaming, because by using my link down below, you can get up to 90% off on games as well as getting the final ship expansion for a much better deal. Don't fancy spending money? That's fine too. You can also join our free monthly giveaway for your chance to win any game of your choice. So go check them out below when you get a moment, and if you're finding this build useful, then a rating is much appreciated too, as they do take quite some time to make. And if you don't like this build, then perhaps you might like some of my other builds for Destiny 2 in my new playlist, all of which which you can find down below. But now guys, let's dive deeper. So we're taking the old Titan Bonk build that everyone used to use a lot and turning it into a new build which before you would use it with Symphoseps to buff your damage and this worked well because the hammer had no cooldown and Symphoseps allowed you to have a lot of DPS for that hammer which was kind of crazy for an ability that had no cooldown and you could just spam it over and over but the hammer got nerfed so now you can't just spam it. Don't get me wrong, it's great still just for general adds and to get that last minute sunspot but Bungie actually did something else with that build. They didn't just nerf the hammers they also nerfed Symphoseps too. So Symphoseps has lost its lunge range, but also now only deals 165% damage compared to the previous 200%. And that for me just wipes that build out, exactly like the Starfire build we had with the Warlocks. So instead we're going to use Ashen Wake to make this an ability build, mostly for grenades, which I have to admit is pretty decent in my opinion if you can use it the way it's supposed to be used. Now this did get a buff, not by much, it just can now stun unstoppables, so it makes using this in endgame content worth using. Although fusion grenades can stun unstoppables anyway from the ignition effects, it will just be a lot easier to do because of that addition to the exotic. But the exotic itself, this allows fusion grenades to gain increased throw speed, explodes on impact, and final blows with the fusion grenade grants grenade energy. Pretty underrated if I'm being honest, it's actually better than it seems. Fusion grenades on its own are already pretty strong, and with our buffs that we get on top of the gameplay loop of how this build flows with the new seasonal perks, it just makes the build so fun to use. You want to treat it like sort of a DPS grenade build, but for champs, mini bosses and major adds that have a fair amount of health, but it really is effective for Adclear. You might not always get the grenade back when using it, but with the mods and perks we have, we'll be able to speed up that process and be able to throw a ton of grenades all over the place. So the way you're going to use this build, and there are a few ways, the first way is that you'll just kill adds with your solar weapons, this is going to spawn sunspots, then passing through that sunspot grants restoration, faster ability recharge rate, and stacks ability damage, then just getting rapid solar kills will most of the time give you radiant and restoration almost infinitely because you're constantly generating sunspots. And this is just with weapons, we haven't even got started with our abilities yet. But the reason this works the way it does is because in the artifact we have two perks, Flint Striker, Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows Grant Radiant, and Kindling Trigger, while Radiant, Solar Weapons apply Scorch to Unscorched Combatants, and because we're using the Aspect Saw Invictus, defeating those Scorched targets will create Sunspots, and then those Sunspots grant Restoration and Abilities Recharge faster when passing through. So that's how the loop works with the weapons, pretty simple, then the fragments of the perks and mods are just going to enhance these effects and making the build even better and easier to maintain. Now the second way you would use the build is you would start by killing an enemy with your melee. Yeah, um, don't miss. So much for that extra tracking buff. Let's restart. Kill an ad with your hammer. 
This gives you Sunspot. Sunspot gives you buffs. Kill adds for Radiant and to extend buffs while spawning more Sunspots. From here, use your grenades to kill groups of adds and tougher enemies. Use your melee and class ability to speed up the cooldown of the grenade and rinse and repeat. This works really good if you have a room full of adds, even Legend and Master difficulty adds, and you can manage to kill them with your grenade every time, most of the time. That is, if you use the build right. If you can do that, this build will work perfectly for you. Now if you're looking for some good weapons to use with this build, I'd strongly recommend a good ad clearing weapon like the Callus Mini Tool. And if you have perks like the Incandescent on it, it's going to do you even more favours, but it isn't required. You do also have things like the Tikus if you want to use an unstoppable bow this season, or the Sunshot for an unstoppable hand cannon. There are a lot of good solo weapons out there to use, so just pick what you're enjoying the most. There's not really a right or wrong choice as long as it's a solo weapon. For the Super, I went with the hammers. You can choose any super, it doesn't really matter, but if you're wanting it to flow with our aspects, then choose the hammers. Barricade, I'm just using a rally for a shorter cooldown. Melee is the hammer as usual. Even though it's been nerfed, it's probably still your best choice. And then the grenade you need is the fusion one, as that is what the build is based around. Aspects, you've got Soul Invictus, which I already went through. This is just going to make our sunspots. If any second aspect I went with is Roaring Flames, so that we can stack up that damage with our solar abilities to make our fusion grenades more powerful. Fragments we have are Ember of Imperium, so a solar weapon or ability final blows, extend the duration of restoration and radiant. Ember of Searing, so defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy, but more importantly, creates a fire sprite. So every enemy we kill after the fire sprite cooldown timer has gone, we'll make a new one, and you'll be able to see these around often, so just pick them up, because it will give you a bunch of grenade energy. We also have Ember of Benevolence, applying our buffs will grant ability energy. You can use this one, or you can use the Ember of Blistering. I try both, and they hardly make much of a difference anyway. I just prefer this one, because we're always applying those buffs frequently. So in endgame content, we should always have that Fragment's Regeneration buff active. The last Fragment I went with though is Ember of Eruption, just so that those Ignitions have an increased AoE. For artifact perks, we have the Kindling Trigger and the Flint Striker, which I mentioned earlier. That's just going to maintain the loop between scorching enemies and getting radiant. Then we're using Heart of the Flame, so our Solar Super grants allies radiant and increases our super's damage for each nearby ally. Wished into being, so we can get orbs when close to a full super on ability kills. The weakening abilities to weaken champions and bosses with our solar abilities, very important. Then I went with Solar Operative for the increased damage when playing solo, but you'd also want to go with the Rays of Precision, so that our Solar Precision final blows can ignite targets while Radiant. This would just help make ad clearing a little bit more effective. For mods, there's not too much going on, they don't really play a big part of builds anymore, but you want two Ashes to Assets for super energy on grenade kills, along with a solo cypher mod, three impact induction mods in the arms, grenade cooldown mods in the legs, and again, grenade cooldown mods in the glass armor. And then just try and get resilience and discipline to 100 for your stats, and with that set up, you'll be throwing fusion grenades and causing a lot of explosive chaos, like there's no tomorrow. Honestly guys, 100% recommend this build, so for this build, I will be rating it a 9 out of 10 for its effectiveness and suitability for endgame content. I would take this into a Grandmaster Nightfall as a build choice, because the fusion grenades are pretty strong, and getting them back isn't too difficult with this build design, even if you don't get kills with that fusion grenade. The recharge for that grenade will be a lot faster than normal, because of everything else going on with the build, like the loop between Radiant, Scorching and Sunspots, which all contribute to making this build better this season in Season of the Wish. If you liked this build, then you might like some of my other builds, you can find that full playlist here on screen, along with this video, which you might also find interesting. Thank you all for tuning in, have a great day or evening, and I'll see you soon for the next build.